Ooh, welcome to ToddFun.com. Today's fun is I got my lab back together. I had taken everything out in order to put a new epoxy floor down and paint everything. And I just got everything out of storage and back on the shelves. And it's all looking real good. I'm starting to be able to do a few more projects again. And the first project on the bench is, yeah, a 1960s or maybe 70s. 8-track walk pan. Yes, that is a shoulder-mounted, battery-operated 8-track player. Back in the old days, that's how we got our music around with us. And I still have the 8-track from when I was a kid. So, let's take a look at that and uh, have a little fun. And yes, it is It is portable. Um, it, it's, it's fairly compact, consider it's an 8-track player. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of features. I haven't quite got the date on it yet. Uh, maybe we'll see some components inside. We can pull the dates off of something inside. Uh, it's got the port where the 8-track goes in. And the top, it's got a volume and a, like a tone high and low. And then it's got uh, the track that you're on. And you can see it does track 1, 2, 3, and 4. And it's an 8-track, but you can only pick through 4, uh, essentially, tracks because it's a stereo thing. You have uh, two tracks dedicated for left and right channels um, for each um, song. So essentially there's, you can only flip through four tracks and then hence there are two tracks per song. Um, and it can play, depending on how long the song is, you can play several songs um, for each one of those one through four. Uh, it, it is portable in that it, you have, it has like a strap release, so a little metal clip pops down in there and then you have a shoulder strap. I didn't get that with this. Um, this isn't the one I had when I was young. Our, our family had another one that was also portable. It was a little bigger. It was about yay wide and about yay high. Uh, it had a built-in radio, so it was a little bigger. Um, but other than that, it was about the same and had a strap. Um, so this is nice in that it's a little smaller, no radio, and it just does the eight tracks. Um, but this is the eight track. Um, this is the Blues Brothers, yes. And uh, actually, it's my sister's eight track. She had this when she was a little kid. We had an 8-track player in the house. Um, earlier, my father even had 8-track players in the car. Uh, my uncles, everyone had 8-track, actually. Uh, but when my sister moved on to cassettes, then I kind of inherited her 8-tracks. And I've, I've kept them. Um, I, really, I really enjoyed them. And the concept is you just slide this gigantic cartridge in, and bam. And, you know, it's, it's a really good media in that it stores, all, it, it stores really good sound. Um, though this won't play in stereo, it's got one speaker. Um, it doesn't have any other outputs though, so you can't actually uh, plug this into like an amplifier or something like that. The only jacks it has is it has power for 120 volts. You can have a 9 volt adapter. Um, and then of course then there's, there's 6 C batteries that go in the back. Uh, so let's go to the bench and start looking at it. Uh, we'll play it first just so we you know, can hear what it sounds like. I'll play a little bit of the blues and hopefully you know, not get a strike for that. <laughs> Sometimes you do. Uh, and then. Uh, and then uh, we'll uh, do some cleanup on it uh, and because it's it's obviously it had been stored someplace with uh, some moisture and there's some corrosion, but it still works. So let's take a look to the bench. So fairly nice looking. It's called Lloyd's. Um, it's it's made by uh, I think uh, Lloyd's Electronics. Yeah, Lloyd's Electronics International. Um, this is model number V128, and it's. Uh, Series 263A, then it does uh, 9 volts in or, or 6 um, C, cell, C size batteries. Uh, made in Hong Kong. So, warning, you know, this is a hazard if it gets wet. Don't get it, don't get it wet or be around moisture. And, and oh, no serviceable parts. Only can be serviced by qualified personnel. Well, good, I'm qualified personnel. So, <laughs> uh, let's get into it. Uh, well, start by getting into the batteries so take a look at that this the string you use to pull your batteries out with and you can see it's kind of rusted in there see if I can get some light down in there for you yeah see this is all rusty so that's all going to be cleaned up I'm not sure how bad the rust is inside um, but that'll be the teardown part of the video well let's just snip that off <laughs> is that really that bad Wow, it's falling apart. Okay. Okay. Um, better look at that. There's the volume. It's a little dirty volume. I already played it once. Um, 
Picked this up for five dollars at a ham fest. That's not bad. And uh, then the push brought for the programming. That's all. That's all you had. But hey, it was portable. That's what you had. So it does come with a AC. So we'll plug that in. Give it some power. Um, there's no real on or off. The thing is, on and off is just you put a tape in it. And so as soon as you jump, jam a tape in, that turns it on. John Scott. On sax. A good friend from New York City. Also from Texas. Mr. Tom Bones Malone. Tom Malone. <laughs> and this is the Blues and Brothers. Also from yeah. There's three. <laughs> Turn it up, I guess. The high low tone doesn't seem to do much. And there's how you turn it off. And yeah, let's take a look at the Blues Brothers here. We have Blues Brothers, briefcase full of blues. Yeah, this is the original one. There's the the list of songs on there if you care to pause and take a look at it one two three and four it's got a, a couple of songs on each hmm very fascinating love this tape okay well it's a working unit and we can sit and listen to some of my eight tracks while I work in my uh, my lab here but let's take it apart make sure it's cleaned up and get it working on batteries so let's see what we got Obviously there's going to be wires on here. Oops, it goes this way. Okay, so we've got some wires going to the speaker. Wow, look at that. Big speaker! Little speaker. <laughs> Even back then they were cutting down on uh, because clearly they could put a large speaker in here. Uh, well, it looks like it was kind of molded for that though because there's no holes anywhere here. Um, but you know, it also has a gigantic looking like speaker on it, and they'll probably never get one that big in there anyway. But that's a little bit of a well, I guess you have marketing, I guess, make it look like it's got more than it has. And so, well, not a whole lot to see. And it's got the transformer down in here for the uh, for the AC, so you could either come in. Yeah, that melting looks like it's factory because we saw some more melting. That's how they melted these bits together. They just hot staked it with a, with soldering iron, basically. But they got the 9 volts coming across, or they could have the the uh, 120 volts coming in here into this transformer, out the back of the transformer coming over to here. So you can either power it from 9 volts batteries or AC, so it's all coming in there. There's going to be some regulation here uh, for the power. And then there's just going to be just enough amplification. There's a volume adjust button up here that's going to then come down and control how much amplification you get. Yeah, so this this looks like it's broken. I think you can see that crack there. And the height of this head is what determines what track it's on, one, two, three, or four. And you can see right now it's on one. And you can see that that reed head is at the highest level. So then when I push this button and this disc will turn, it'll, there's a cam right down right down in there there's a cam that comes over and it controls the height of this plastic assembly which controls the height of this even though this is cracked the screw is holding the head down and in place so I'll push the button and you'll watch this cam down in here and watch this head right here and it'll go down and it went down just one track they have two tracks three tracks now it's on four so let's go back to the top now now it's back to the first track. So that's what it lines it up and if there's an adjustment problem there's a there's a set screw way back in there for adjusting. You'd have to get a, take this disc off and you could adjust that screw to determine the height of this cam because this pretty much mounts right straight in there. Uh, let's see there of course the motor and the motor is going to turn uh, this this shaft over here so the motor goes down underneath there's going to be a belt most likely or it could be even a gear and it's going to turn it's going to turn that metal shaft right in there hope you can see it deep in there Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit for you 
and it's going to turn that metal shaft right down in there. And what that does is it, it when the tape is in there, it pinches it pinches on that roller right there. So this is the track, it, the A track. It goes in, and there's a rubber roller there. And then that metal pinches on the tape, and then as it spins that roller, it pulls the tape around, goes, loops around in here, and it loops on the inside, and then it goes back to the outside, inside all the way in, and outside all the way out. So it's continuous. It just basically re-spools itself on a single spool inside this track, inside the A track. Real clever. You never have to flip them, you know. So you know it's really clever. I mean, other than the size, it's a pretty clever. Um, let's see. Well, there's some grease down in there, of course, but it looks like it's holding up fine. Now the tone button up here, but it looks like, even though it doesn't seem like it does, it does much. It's just a switch. Zoom in on that for you. It's just a switch with a, a green capacitor. You can see that little green capacitor on it right there. Um, all it does is, is is put that capacitor across this potentiometer, which is your volume control up here. Um, so basically you got a pot controlling your volume and you can either add or subtract that capacitor from across that pot. I don't know. <laughs> I guess that's it's probably standard tone stuff for stuff like this. It would probably affect the sound somewhat. Um, at least they must think so. Uh, of course the batteries, they go down in this compartment down here. And I don't really think there's much else to this, really. Um, just a little mechanical switching to change the height of this reed head. Let's plug it in and, and show you um, the on-off switch, which I remember I said earlier, it's just the tape being stuck in. But there is technically a switch there. So we'll plug it in. Watch my fingers here. And if you look right here, there's a switch. And when the tape is pushed in, it pushes up on that switch. So I'll put my finger in there and flip that switch up, and you'll hear it kick in. Well, I can't get it there. And it's spinning. Can you see this? It's spinning there? Yeah. And that's what happens. Is it just pushes up and makes contact with that switch right there. So that's technically the on-off switch. Let's put a tape in, in this weird mechanism. Don't get no wire stuck on there. It should turn it on. You should see this turning. There we go. Turn up the volume. Let's switch the tape. See it spinning there, and we'll switch again, and then we'll switch again. Yeah, and that's a eight track mechanism working, working right out of the, and then it's off. And there does seem to be one more adjustment right there. They got a little bit of red, um, red paint on that. That seems to be a bit of an adjustment as well. It controls essentially the tilting of that read right head a little bit. Um, so I'm really there's nothing to do about this. I would fix this because it is broken but the thing is that screw is holding down on that head and it's got most of its threads are on there. So all I'm going to do is uh, is get a little bit of glue on there and see if that'll just keep it from breaking over the years while I use it. And so it's uh, it's got a lot of like wax on it. I suppose they're just they've got the wax on here just sort of because it's supposed to be an outside thing that you can use outdoors, um, and it helps electronics not get too rusty. But for the most part, it's not rusty inside. Uh, it's got some rust on the on the battery components down here, but there's no rust inside at all. So it, it's nothing really to fix. I thought I was going to find a mess in here. Um, there's a nine volt. It's marked nine volt battery or motor um, made by Kawasaki in Japan. Um, that's what they must have done back then. And I was looking desperately for a date code, and the closest I could get, I think, if I'm reading it right, is uh, 1977. There's a 77 on there. Let's see if I can zoom in for you. So 1977, 31 week, and that's the marking on this Pioneer. Um, 
1.2 watt 8 ohm speaker. That's all I could find. Uh, it's assembled nice. I mean, it has nice um, metal uh, metal receivers for all the screws, so it's not like it's screwed into plastic. All of this is, is brass metal receivers. So it's serviceable. Other than these, these clips were a little hard to work because because they were old. This volume pot's a bit noisy, crackly, if you will. So I'm gonna see if I can't get a little cleaner on that. That might help out a little bit. I got some of this. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Um, it's really good at cleaning contacts. Just a little spurt in one of these little holes, and it'll it'll wash out. It'll clean up those. Uh, it'll clean up in there real nice. It was, it was playing. It was playing, but when I changed the volume, it crackled a lot. So I was clearly causing some problems. And then I was get a lid on that switch there too. Get to zero, stick it on at zero, and there you go. Oh wow, that's a lot smoother now. Yeah, that that's a lot smoother, and the switch is a lot smoother. That made a big difference. I also cleaned up a lot of lithium grease in here with some with some Q-tips, and then I put new grease on that cam and some new grease um, um, on this mechanism. I also cleaned this reed right head with some alcohol, and then this roller back here. I turned on. I just pushed this button to turn it on. And then I just uh, ran the uh, Q-tip up and down that roller, so that pinch roller is nice and clean. It was it was kind of dirty, so that'll keep from getting the tape dirty. And I've got I got some glue holding that crack down, so when that dries now overnight, then this will uh, that will make sure that that doesn't move anymore. It'll have to hold. I'm sure there's no replacement parts. <laughs> Back together and no strings attached. Got the battery compartment all cleaned up. Let's see if she'll run on batteries. This isn't scratchy anymore, they're nice and clean. Let's see if the tone works now. That's smooth. Oh yeah, the tone is making a difference now. That's high tone, and that's low tone, so it puts that capacitor in series, or, yeah, in series, or parallel, sorry. <laughs> well, there you go. Eight track, portable. Uh, everything seems to be real nice now. I guess all I got now is... Uh, That'll be the end of this video, and the next one will be a few mods. I mean, we can't hardly walk around with this uh, at the mall unless we have a shoulder strap. Uh, so we'll do that and then uh, look at some other things. So the next video, some mods, and that'll be it on the fun little 8-track. Thanks for joining.